stick around, but we also have to bring Phased in, so we have to drop somebody when we bring Phased in. We'll drop Basil. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'll see you jerks next week. I, I didn't. I didn't make that suggestion, Jesse. That's not me. <laughs> All right, we're going live now. Let's go to silence. Welcome to Vape Link, episode 11, Joe versus the Volcano. We are going to have a couple guests today, but first, I want to introduce my buddies. You got Basil, right up here, Jesse, and we also have Michael Kazikan. What's up, guys? Ah, <laughs> Nothing, man. Good to be here. I'm, I'm, I'm glad. So, I'm, I'm, I look forward to these shows, so this is, this is fun. Me too. So, uh, how was everybody's Thanksgiving weekend? Did everybody fill up on turkey? And did you do any shopping? I did very little shopping. I did uh, make one of the most ridiculous turkeys ever because it was stuffed with White Castle sliders. Oh my God, that sounds yeah. fantastic. Yeah, you uh, tear up good. the sliders into little pieces with a little diced celery, some, toss it in some chicken broth, and you shove it in there. It, uh, uh, I want to come over to your house for Thanksgiving. Surprisingly, it was just like regular stuffing, like especially like mom used to make, where my mom will take the turkey neck and she'll fry it up and then chop it into pieces, put that in the stuffing. So it's uh, my, I'm used to stuffing that always has meat in it. So it was like the same thing. It was really wild. Wow. Nice. Wow. I'm gonna have to keep that in mind for next year. I'm gonna tell my girlfriend. I'm gonna be like, yeah, no pickles though. No pickles on the castle sliders. sliders. Yeah. No pickles cool. on them. Nice. Cool. So, Kaz, what did well, you do for Thanksgiving? We, we pushed Thanksgiving to thir to Saturday, so that we could have a family Thanksgiving uh, with my mom and my girlfriend and the, that whole thing because the schedules were all messed up. So it uh, it ended up that uh, uh, m mom did not want to go out, so Stephanie and I went out for some real Chicago thin crust pizza. We went to Pinocchio's Pizza Pub. And I got to work on a little video project that I'm working on. You know, most of the guys that are running um, uh, Vape Bash are people that I know from the Windy City Club. So I've been going around to different restaurants and making little tiny videos about good Chicago food. And I'm going to string them all together and put out like a 10-minute video. So Stephanie gave me a hand with that. We took video on her phone and we hung out. And uh, it was a pretty good weekend. I enjoyed myself. Cool. So today... We are going to be talking about the Lava Tube 2.0. We have a very special guest. Uh, before I introduce him, I also want everybody to know that we are also going to have Phased. Phased is a reviewer uh, on YouTube. You should definitely check out his channel. Uh, he also works with eSigAdvance.com. And here we go. We got Joe Volcano from VolcanoEsigs.com. How's it going, Joe? Hey, how you doing? Um, I was actually typing. That's funny. I could see the delay. <laughs> Busted. How's, it, how's everything going? Pretty good. So, I have your Lava Tube 2.0. And I have to tell you, man, I'm really enjoying this thing. Um, you want to tell us a little bit about it? Oh, I lost you. Damn. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. I'm... 
<laughs> still talk. Okay, I can understand. Don't don't watch the video. Um, it's don't funny watch the video. the video because everything happens so delayed. But anyways, uh, <laughs> yeah, I got a pink one right here. Um, nice. I'm enjoying See, it cool. also. It's been a long, uh, stressful uh, release. Uh, obviously, you guys know most of you guys know the stress I've had with the original Lava Tube version one. And um, basically, everybody now sells it for you know forty bucks. Um, well, we now have the new Lava Tube version two, and it's um, it's got a lot of different features on it. Um, we originally got the Lava Tube two back in May. Um, gosh, that's almost six months ago. There were some problems, um, and we had revisions. And what happens is basically. They send the product to us, um, our factory, um, and we find the little problems. We send it back. They look at those problems, send it back to us with the fixes, and we look at that again. Um, it went back and forth for about three months, and I think it was like a, a vape stock. We had it, and we said it was going to be released in two weeks. That was my mistake. Uh, because there's a there's a big difference between a sample product and then a sample that you get right. that's machine and mass produced when you receive thousands of them. Um, and when we received the thousands of them, there were little problems with it, and so we had to get it sent all back and fixed again. And then we were about to have it released in August, and then in August we had issues. Uh, we actually sent it out to all the reviewers. Um, and then I did a recall on all of them, but unfortunately, one of the reviewers, hint, hint, is in here, uh, actually <laughs> got the product, <laughs> and he had his review out, and I, I caught it too late, but it was all good. Um, I'm glad that someone got to look at it and preview it, and it's been basically the most hyped about uh, product for the last you know three months because of uh, your videos. Um, yeah. So yeah, we have finalized. We have the finalized versions right now. Um, here's the pink one right here. Um, he, I think, uh, um, Field of Vapor has the blue one. I don't know who else has any of them. Is that blue? Yeah. But blue uh, um, they have lots of different features. Let's see. Yeah, do you mind? Has, do you mind kind of taking us through the what's new compared to the original lava tube here? Yeah, that's what I was curious about that too. Uh, I would say the weight of it is about the same as the chrome lava tube, maybe a little bit lighter than the chrome lava tube, uh, a little bit shorter than the chrome lava tube. Oh, I should have brought one out with me. Um, let's see, it has pulse width modulation. Um, the cutoff is at, at 15 seconds. Um, there's also a shutoff safety. We really went into a lot of the safety features. Uh, for example, if you leave it sitting around and you don't use it for 15 minutes, it actually um, shuts off and you have to actually push the button five times to turn it back on again. Uh, the reason we did this is we figured if someone's actually using the product and it's sitting there at the table and a ch child uh, comes by and picks it up when daddy's using the bathroom or whatnot, tries to use it, he can't use it. Um, if it's been sitting there for a while or if they left it at home or, or whatnot. Um, or even in so your they pocket would actually, I suppose actually at that rate. have to turn it on, per click it five times. Um, just for a safety feature, and we actually like that. I like that. Um, let's see what else it has a heat coil spring, um, and we've actually tested it. We've we've actually purposely shorted a battery, and and it actually um, the spring collapsed, and there was no problem except for the battery actually venting. And we tested it under vent pressure, and it vented through the whole, two holes, and there was no damage to the product whatsoever. Uh, what else? Um, I think the five like click also, on and off feature, so you could turn it on and off, and you could also see with the buttons there, it's it's inset into the product, so you can't push it by accident when it's inside your. Um, Let me give you a close up on line. that, Joe. Um, <clears throat> go ahead and go ahead and show that button in a close up now, because I've got you. Yeah, it's so delayed; it's kind of hard to show you at the same time. But go ahead. Yeah, there you go. So the button, the button is recessed. You know, you still have the two buttons for voltage up and down. Correct. So, um, yeah, and there's yeah. no power on and off feature anymore. 
Okay. Okay. Nice. So, uh, I mean, there's no power on and off button anymore. The power right. on and off is on the activation switch. Right. Is there? Is there? A, what, what's the watt limit on this? Some people are going to be curious about that. Uh, it's. Um, it depends on the um, on the battery, but it's at three amps basically um, right now. So yeah, I mean. Uh, I saw I saw about fourteen and a half watts on yeah. a one point five ohm cardamizer. That's nice. Yeah. So uh, so yeah, basically the amp limit has been raised. Um, you know, I think that the big thing for me is that it's it's an all new casing, right? Right. Like it's no longer the end caps or anything like that. It uh, it unscrews in the center. Um, it's really beefy piece of electronics. So yeah, it I know is a lot thicker. Um, and the reason why it's a lot thicker, the aluminum, is we wanted it beefy and we want it to feel like it's it's has some serious quality in it. Also, um, we can do engravings when it's this thick. We could actually engrave it better. You can also inset the button. If it wasn't this thick, you couldn't inset the button like how it is right now. Um, also some other features like we have the logo engraved in the bottom. It's, it's engraved all over the body with our uh, lava tube name. Uh, um, it's got two vent holes. It's got a small liquid well which really doesn't catch much liquid but it'll catch a drip or two. Um, it's got a lanyard hole. That's another thing. Um, so a lot of people now are using lanyard holes and so we put a lanyard hole in this one. Um, you can hold the left side down and you get a voltage reading. You hold down the right side uh, plus button and you get an ohms reading. Uh, three amp limit, like I said. And let's see. If there's a short, it'll cut off the battery and it'll actually say low on the screen. Yeah. Okay. And so that is, oh, smoother threads. Yeah, the threads are very nice and smooth now. I think I pretty much said all the things, but there, yeah, it's, it's completely different. It's a very high quality uh, mod. Um, to me, it's something if I was to look at it, it was made in the USA. Okay, that's good. So, and so, with a very low, inexpensive price. So you have which we won't be um, mentioning today. I'll be mentioning it tomorrow. Oh chat. come on! You yeah, know you want sorry. to, Joe. So everybody, uh, this is going to be expensive. <laughs> it will be the the price of it, and uh, also the release date will be all mentioned in our chat tomorrow. So okay, and I did um, get a I did get an invitation to that via Google Plus, so I'll be there. All right, cool. And we'll do uh, uh, we'll do a special vape link show tomorrow night. Just about three minutes to talk about the price, or maybe not. But. <laughs> <laughs> So, I actually, we'll um, um, show you all five colors too, right next to each other. Oh, very want. cool! All right, let me give you a close-up for that. Yeah. And so, so there's Joe, all the why colors. Why are you doing that? You you, you had a, a decent amount of um, anticipation for the for this device, right? Right. And and um, you know, so like people have been going crazy. And, uh, you know, they're waiting for it. And, you know, I've been following the threads on the forums. And, obviously, you know, you're on those threads, too. Um, like, can, can you uh, talk a little bit about the time that it takes to bring something like this to market? Because, you know, lots of vendors buy stuff, you know, from, from manufacturers in China, right? And, right. you know, it's like already... Uh, you know, available for purchase. You just pay and you get it. And I and I don't think that people understood that. Um, you know, you were working on a completely different pro uh, product, and the amount of time that it takes, like with shipping and stuff like that. Um, and you know, I know you even had uh, at the time that around the time that I got mine, um, my first one, uh, you you had them all in your warehouse and then had to send them back. Can you talk a little bit more about that as to like why these people have had to wait so long? 
I guess um, if it was made in the USA, it would be a lot quicker process. The problem is, is when you manufacture something and you want it made in China, it's a long process, and um, we have to deal with uh, the secrecy of the products. First of all, we want to make sure that it doesn't get out to any of the other factories. So, I mean, we went through screening a lot of people there, and um, attorneys, and and a lot of it's a it's a huge process just to make sure that. It doesn't get out how it's manufactured and where it's manufactured. That's number one. Number two, um, I probably we might not even make these in uh, China in the future, uh, just because of the long process and how long it takes to fix one little thing. Whether it's the size of the lanyard pole, whether if it's stuff, uh, how it's aligned or uh, colors being off. Every single time there's something fixed, there's something else that's broken. So it's just a long process. I would imagine it would be um, But for we, um, for this product, um, I finally came out and with the, the finalized version, and, and it's pretty much perfect. We do have a strict quality control uh, management system. As they're being um, produced, there is five quality control agents that actually look at the whole process as it's being developed. And then once it's uh, completed, we have an outside source um, that we've hired to go through um, the boxes and check them as they go and leave China to us. Then when we receive it, every single one of them is screened. We have a person that's actually opening and closing every single box. We have a second person that actually picks up um, the product and looks at it and sees if there's any defectives with the screen, the buttons, the the paint job, um, anything visually wrong with it. Then we have a third person that actually puts in a battery and makes sure all the buttons work. Um, this costs a lot of money. Um, I could obviously just buy something from China, have no quality control and sell it to you and have it at a uh, a very inexpensive $40 price and have, give you a one month warranty but we're doing super quality control and giving a one year warranty on a very good um, variable voltage device that I could put my name on. And I, and I think that, that that's the thing is you know you could have put this out a couple months ago. Uh, the ZMAX was out a couple months ago and yeah. you know the settings on it were wrong and people bought them and you could have done the same thing so well, I, yeah, I think I that didn't. we were didn't. we had basically um, yeah. a, we're doing a V average originally um, a couple months ago and we we're gonna release it at that time and decided to change the chipset and change it to RMS because a lot of reviewers were giving the Chinese mods a bad reviews of course, this upset a lot of our customers, and they said, oh, I don't care, just release it. But, you know, honestly, if you guys waited for four months, you guys can wait another month or two and have a perfect product before Christmas. Um, you know, I, I got to say, Joe, I, I just want to say this. I have a lot of respect for that because this sounds to me like a mod that's going to get out in the marketplace and not need endless revisions. Because I'm, I'm, exactly. I'm, at, I'm on... Well, I have a, a, Z, a, a Z Max version too, but if you count the V Maxes, that's like 18 revisions or something like that. It's it's just an incredible number of <laughs> of. And of they tankers. rushed the product out because they probably knew that we're putting out the lava tube, right. so yeah. they rushed it out, and it wasn't uh, perfect. And so that's what's going to happen when you rush it out. I'd rather put out one revision. It's, so, Joe, we're can actually I ask don't you a bit of a tough question? It's actually called Lava Tube Version 2, uh, just so everybody knows. But I, so, I kind of screwed up and keep telling people Lava Tube 2.0. Okay. Oh, <laughs> so, let me ask you a bit of a, a tough question, maybe. Um, from If we think all the way back, I guess, man, it's over a year ago now, I think, uh, the original Lava Tube, right? Now we're talking about Lava Tube 2. Um, are there things that you wanted to be able to do with this that you still weren't able to do? that maybe someday in the future, if we're talking Lava Tube 3, or we give it a new name, or a, a next device, are there any little you know tweaks or features that you were hoping to be able to work in but just weren't able to here?
I totally lost you, but damn it. Uh, well, he, what, um, he was, what he was asking was, and let me see if I can get the, the question through to you, is the were there some some features or feature sets, some ideas and stuff that you wanted to do with the mod that you didn't get with this revision that you left at the side that you might consider later? I mean, are, are, how far are you guys post pre-engineering your new products, that type of thing? I, I'm not asking you the name, the, the innovations you might be thinking of, but just sort of curious. Uh, I think I mentioned it earlier. I was going to add an accessory to the top of it because a lot of people like the uh, spring uh, connections that are on our chrome lava tube. Um, we might actually might just make that as accessory. The problem is, is when you add that piece, it, it makes it an inch taller. So right. a lot of people don't want that piece and they want it as short as possible. So we figure we can just add it as an accessory um, and have it to match every single lava tube. Um, instead of making it part of it and having something that's too big, we already feel like it's a beefy product it's a lot thicker um, and that's just because of the button welding and the etching um, but to make it and add an extra you know spring connector on the top would have made it taller and too big so I we kinda left that off we haven't had any problems with the connection um, on any of our atomizers um, that we sell I can't say um, what everybody else is sell but we've had no problems it's a standard 510 connector uh, but it it should do the job for everybody. Nice. Um, that's one thing. Um, yeah, on, on version three, there's going to be uh, probably different technology that we're going to enhance to it. But I don't see anything happening in the next couple months that would say, "Don't buy it now. Buy it in a month from now." Um, so here, here's a maybe quick question. Six months from now. That's about it. Yeah, I don't see anything happening very soon. I'm very here, happy here, with the product the way it is. Here's a quick question, Joe. Uh, did you guys ever think about dropping the Lava Tube name? Uh, specifically because the uh, other vendors out there that are selling the old Lava Tube as, you know, a Lava Tube, and some of them are even calling it the Lava Tube 2 for the, the 1.5 revision. Uh, like the confusion is there confusion there and do you plan on doing anything as far as um, you know maybe uh, telling vendors hey if China wants to call something a lava tube fine but if you're gonna sell it on your store you know don't you guys have a trademark on that yes we do and uh, yes we do tell US vendors that they can't use our name very politely some people actually get pissed off because they think it's my fault that the Chinese are calling it the lava tube. I'm actually happy that the Chinese call it the lava tube. They can call it the lava tube all day. It just keeps the, the name floating around and they use it as a general name for the product. Uh, but yeah, in the U.S. we're the only people that could actually use the name lava tube and they can't use our name. Um, the vendors cannot use our name. So um, I, I don't like threaten anybody with lawsuits or, any, or anything. I just tell them, look, I, I know China's sold you the product as a lava tube, but you know you can't use the name in the U.S. It's trademarked, and it's actually uh, being processed for trademark throughout the world, but it hasn't been finished in China yet. So, so we may see uh, a day. I'm not going to drop the name. I love the name, lava tube. Yeah, I think yeah. it's a household name in the vaping community now. I don't see any reason to drop the name. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So, so I assume that there'll come a day when China can't sell these things as lava tubes. Uh, sell, sell their product. I mean, like I see some products that don't even look like lava tubes, right? The original lava tube. They, they're just a completely different product, and they put lava tube on there. So I imagine that eventually that won't be allowed. Well, if you Google lava tube. Um, it's funny, the, a real volcano lava tube actually doesn't even pop up. Uh, lava tube actually is number one on Google, uh, our, our lava tube device. So if someone wants to um, type lava tube or lava tube e-cig or lava tube mod, whatever, uh, it's going to pop up with volcano e-cigs as number one. So the day that we're not number one, then that's the day I'm going to have to worry about that. Cool. <laughs> It's also All the right, first thing well, on Bing as well. Just throw that out there. I'm sorry. <laughs> you're the Are you first a Bing man? Bing. You're the first on Bing as well. Oh, okay, cool. 
All right, guys. So uh, I guess I'm going to open it up to Ka. I know I've kind of been like dominating the conversation. So Kaz, Basil, I'm going to shut up for a little bit right before we wrap this up, and then we'll bring on FaZe, and maybe we'll get Grim Green in here. I, I assume we will. Um, oh my. You mean I'm going to have to work? I was having such a good time sitting here. <laughs> um, I, I suppose the only I, I suppose I really don't have any questions. I, I'm 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 looking forward to being able to buy one. Um, I was a fan of the original Lava Tube, and I've owned four of them, and given two of them away. <laughs> um, Were they replaced uh, Lava Tubes? Yeah, well, no, no, I, 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 uh, uh, I had a silver one, and I gave it to a cousin, and he quit smoking, and then I had a black one, and uh, I gave that away to a friend, and then uh, I have a, a black mini, and I have a pink mini, and the pink mini I won at uh, Vape Expo in Michigan, so uh, they're, they get used, I use them, they're, they're in my arsenal. So that's not a real lava tube. That's a fake one. We don't sell that. <laughs> oh, the, the mini one? Okay. There you go. Anyway. I'm sorry about that. But the other ones were legit. I purchased them directly from you. Yeah, it's cool. You know, and uh, what happens uh, with me is I end up giving mods. I give mods to people who are going to quit smoking, uh, if, especially if they're close to me because then they have a jump on it. They don't have to go through the cigarette form factor, then the ego and whatever. So I start my friends out with something that can actually kick a bit. That's cool. Um, I, another thing I forgot to mention is we actually have, it can actually f um, fit a 18700 battery inside this. So you can oh, fit okay. a 3000. We're going to be selling 3000 mah ultra fires that can fit in these also. Um, we've allowed it in the original, it could only fit the AW18650 battery. Uh, we made it a little bit deeper in the inside by um, pushing everything up to allow an 18700 battery. Um, but we only recommend, obviously, the ones that we sell. And that's not because we're trying to make money. It's because we actually sell our batteries very inexpensive. We sell authentic uh, AW batteries for 11 bucks, And uh, we'll be selling the 3000 Ma Ultra Fire, I believe, for about the same price. So. It's not like uh, we're trying to make money on the batteries. We just want you to buy a product um, that was tested um, with the batteries that we're selling. Okay, that's good. Well, I mean, I have my questions answered. I just want to buy one. So I'll right. see you tomorrow. <laughs> so, so um, um, do we want to take... Yeah, so if uh, you guys want to post up the uh, the chat for me. Um, it's going to be 9 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time that we're going to do the uh, chat and we'll mention price and we'll mention um, exactly what time and when we'll be selling it. Yeah, Great. yeah Kaz, I posted that, that link to you in dev chat. So my, you know, I'm not in the, uh, I'm not in our chat role because I don't like to sign into that stuff. <laughs> I'm weird. Okay, yeah, Artist Boy put it in. Thank you, Artist Boy. It's cool. there. We've so, um, do we do we do we want to take before we uh, let Joe go? Do we want to take one question from the audience? Yeah, we can do that. You want me to turn the phone line on? Turn the phone line on. Turn the phone line on. Okay, guys, phones are open. Eight four seven four two three eight five eight one. We will take one call. Matt, so I saw your in. your hat comment. <laughs> So there's the uh, there's a the number. If anybody wants to call in, feel free. Uh, we have time for one question with Joe, and then uh, I know he's a very busy man, um, so we will let him go. We do, we do have a call coming in. I'm waiting for it to answer. It is now answered. Area code nine zero four. Welcome to Vape Link. I what what did I say I was going to do? You're in the link. How's that? Okay. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Speak, up. Speak to Joe Volcano. <laughs> yes, I was wondering if y'all were going to be offering something like the Kindy Puncher Kit. The what can you, kit? Can you repeat your question? Ki I think he said Kidney uh, Puncher Kit. Kidney Puncher Kit uh, has what is a Lambo. It looks a lot like the uh, 
lava tip. They also had everything you need to start making. The juice, the atomizers, everything. Oh, are we selling a kit? Yeah. yeah. No, are, I'm are trying to wonder. I'm wondering if Bob Kane is going to offer something like that. Yes, we are. We're going to offer something like that. Um, I can't go into the specifics of the kit because we're still trying to we're still trying to figure out exactly what's going to be in the kit right as we speak. Um, whether it's going to be an atomizer or a tube tank, um, that'll be up to us. Uh, liquid. Um, there's many different variables that we're thinking of right now um, as far as what's going to be in the kit, and I'm sure there's rumors on what it what was going to be originally, but we decided uh, that the dripping method may not work. Uh, we might go a different route, but we may still. We don't know yet. I can't confirm nor deny it. Can you confirm a charger? Uh, definitely going to use the XTAR charger, the WP2 uh, XTAR charger, which is a great charger. That's this one. I actually have one right here. So uh, that's actually going to be my work charger. All right, so I think we have a couple people lined up to uh, talk further about this coming on. Right. Joe, I want to thank you for coming on. Uh, I know you don't normally do this type of stuff. Um, so everybody check out the chat tomorrow. Find out when you can buy one of these. Um, I know anybody who emails me, I will send them directly to the chat. I've been getting emails for a couple months now. <laughs> so... Uh, yeah, I mean, I think we're all pretty excited about this, and uh, we're glad that it's uh, that it's finally finished. And I uh, look forward to seeing uh, the announcement of the release date and the price. So, again, thanks, Joe, and uh, we'll talk to you soon. All right, and Thank what I'm going to yeah, do is thank you so much for having me on. I greatly appreciate it. Um, Always. I hope to catch all you guys tomorrow on the chat. Fantastic. Okay. We'll see you then. Be good, Joe. We're going to flip over to a bio break, so if you need it, go do it. And we'll be back with the amazing, Small wonderful Nick Green and uh, with uh, FaZe. Enjoy it, because I so know I did. There. I was making it. Luke, Tim, apologies in advance. This just had to be done. All right? So let's start by turning up the bass line a bit. Oh, no. Someone said CEO, and I really think, oh. No, Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink. Oh, no, someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no. You guys won't be getting off easy, eh? Sitting here along with my RTA, just relaxing at the end of a stressful day. Got my mini cube with a fully charged source, got a big bottle of juice and a needle, of course. Trying to catch up, see what I've missed, wondering if some new PV's been dissed. Switch on G Plus to see who's online, and my notifications come to over a thousand lines. But oh, no. Someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no. Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink. Oh, no. Someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no. Drink up, guys. There's a lot more to come. Going through my list and I see something nice UKV hangout, a place for jokes and advice Get out my headset, switch on the mic Even in all, think I found something that I might like Join in Dell, Lee, Paula and Andrew Did I forgot to mention Tar Hill too And a special guest from the US of A Renee, she's so sweet, what more can I say? Oh, no Someone said CEO and I really think oh, no Tim and Luke, it's time for another drink, oh, no, someone said CEO, and I really think, oh, no, just a few more now, yeah, hang in there. Special event tonight, the drinking game, it's not like the others, nowhere near the same, whenever someone says CEO, Luke and Tim both gotta have another go, a shot for each time, the letters get said, so by this time they both got spinning heads, such a simple thing with no real rules. A word of warning though, someone really drools. Oh, no. It's the last time I'm gonna say CEO. Hey guys, and welcome back. My cohorts have used the, uh, uh, have, have used the bio break to their advantage and are looking happy and smiley now. Uh, I 
I, Mike, you know, take it away, man. Your show lead, do your thing. I got these guys queued up. Let me know when to go. Let's bring on our first guest, Phased. Actually, we Boom. have both. We have both of them. And our second guest, I'm, I'm getting okay, there. Okay. Okay. Getting there. All up on me. <laughs> and our second guest, Grim Green, my the friends, amazing. my friends, the amazing are here Green. with me. <laughs> I think these are. Is he that amazing? <clears throat> no. He's I don't grim, have any really. friends in real life. Just you guys. <laughs> that's uh, that's something. Look at that. <laughs> yeah, and I got this camera all messed up too. I got to fix it because he'll be mad at me if I don't. Yes, let's fix Grim. I'm trying to fix Grim. Faze, you are wearing a hat. Thank you. Thank you. My hair is actually getting a little out of control. I almost wore a hat today. That's where the whole hat thing came from, man. Whoa. Well, we're not getting any audio from uh, Faced, but we are now. I am. Okay. I is that better? Yeah. There you go. I got everything fixed. Uh, we have video from Nick. We have video from you. Nick, you're the link person today. You're right in the middle. Oh, cool. I, well, that's fine with me. You are the center of our vaping universe. Cool. <laughs> no, well, no, I don't know about that. I'm happy to be here, right in the middle. Well, you're not the center of my vaping good. anything. So Thank you very much. Well, for that makes, that brings you back down to earth. That's what I'm here for. All right, <laughs> All right guys. So, um... I'm so happy you guys decided to come on, and um, I know that we all have Lava Tube 2.0s, we or or version twos or whatever they're calling it, and uh, you know. So I thought it would be great to have you guys come on. And what I want to know first off is when you got this sucker out of the package, what was your first, very very first thought? Phase, you take it, and then we're going to move to Grim. Um, my first thought was, cool, it looks like a silver bullet. Because <laughs> um, uh, I really like my silver bullet. Um, and then I used it, and I'm like, wow. Because, you know, I think I'm one of the few people that wasn't really a fan of the first lava tube. Um, yeah. And then I got this one, and I was thinking, man, they hit the nail on the head with it. I really like it. So Grim. That was my first impression. Yeah, yeah. I mean, very similarly, when you look at it, the button, just the button, you instantly, your mind just goes to Silver Bullet because it looks, it doesn't feel, but it looks exactly like the Silver Bullet button. So you can't help but think, wow, this, this looks like a Silver Bullet. And uh, I thought that it was uh, clearly a step in the right direction. It's it, it's like a lava tube, but everything's better. The build is better. It's thicker. It's sturdier. Um, I was kind of impressed with it kind of right out of the gate, I guess. I want to tell you what I thought of it when I first opened it. I thought, because Grim, I, I, I watch your videos all the time. You know that. Okay. And, Do uh, you know, I see your, your, your green silver bullet that pops up yeah. here and there every right yeah. and and my first thought was they made a mod for grim green <laughs> <laughs> i was like you're was such like, a fan they, girl you're such a fan <laughs> girl mike <laughs> i was like Where, where's the green one <laughs> we need to get him a green one yeah that's actually that's actually the first thing i asked josh was uh where's the green one but he's like oh we don't have a green one what mm. a letdown that's okay Josh has got to get on that, Josh or Joe or... I don't know. I kind of think that for once we need a, somebody that doesn't cater their colors to Nick. Because, <laughs> you know, I think every once in a while he just has to get let down, and that doesn't happen very often. I, just, I do get let down. And you know what? A lot, a lot of people like green. It's not just a grim thing. A lot of people like, uh, a lot of people like green. Green's a very popular color. I, I want agree. somebody to sample is it really? my wall. Is it really? No, I don't know if it is. It seems like it is. 
I want right. somebody to sample my wall and take that color and make a PV that's this color. So Was that, that I can kind of like hold it up and it's camoed. <laughs> Yeah, I can't, I can't see your wall. Isn't it, isn't it like a salmon-colored wall? Yeah, everybody's no, doing this salmon weird. thing tonight. I don't know what it is. There's the wall, I there's don't... Basil's shirt, there's my forehead. Oh, uh, there, there it goes. Oh, I guess there it's it like goes. a burgundy. <laughs> yeah. it, is, it is a burgundy. I have to rely so, on Google image search. I just searched field of vapor, and then there's you going like, <laughs> just burgundy wall. <laughs> Yo, I actually, I am worried that when I move, I'm going to have to match this color <laughs> and paint a wall in my new house this color. It's amazing Otherwise, because we have that technology now. We've, we've evolved that far. <laughs> just buy a green screen. Take a picture of your wall and then just get a green screen, put it behind you. Like no one would even notice. So I, I have a question about the uh, about the build. You know, I too have been watching your videos for for years, Nick, and 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 have been stalking you and egging your house. Um, yes, cause. <laughs> uh, is I is would it fall into uh, the realm of impressive? I mean, when you pick it up, I haven't touched one yet. So I mean, is it? Uh, do you? Do uh. If you know, you've held a silver bullet or if yeah. you've held like a substantial mod, yeah. it's not really impressive. It's kind of where the lava tube should have been. It's kind of like it's up to par now. Okay. You know what I mean? Got it. Like it's not a game changer as far as like build quality. It's good quality. Right. But <clears throat> you know what I mean? Like I feel like it's up to where it should be. Like this right. is what the lava tube should have been. It should have been... You know, I, and I don't know what this is made out of. I'm guessing it's aluminum or it's too light to be stainless steel. Right. But like a hefty mod. Like mods like this have been around for a while, sure. and now the lava tube just got here. You know what nice. I mean? Nice. Okay. So, Nick, did you have the original? Did you have an original lava tube at any point? Yeah, I do. I, uh, I don't know where it is. In fact, I think Amber <clears throat> stole mine. I think she stole my original <laughs> lava tube. So, Faze, you said that you weren't impressed with the V1. Nick's had a V1. We've all, I think, probably used the V1 or some other vendor's version of the V1, right? So, Faze, right. what what impresses you, or or what do you think is better here in V2 than was there in V1? Uh, things I like about it. Well, um, one, it's it's solid. It, there's no more plastic ends. Um, there's no more end caps that can break. That was one of the first things on mine that broke. Was the I broke the bottom cap first. And then I actually dropped it and broke the top cap. I ended up fixing it. I made a video on it. I don't, I don't know if anybody's seen it or not, but I kind of married it with a Buzz Pro top and bottom, and it worked. But um, you know, it was my you know I the only other variable voltage PV I'd had to that point uh, was a Provary, and so yeah, I spent a lot less for the for the lava tube, but I was just disappointed that it didn't work as well. Um, I can't say that about this one. Um, because you know I've got the ECD meter and yes this is pulse width modulated and when I set it to 5 volts I'm getting about 5 volts and that's what I want you know regardless of price point I just want it to work like it's supposed to um, so I, I'm very happy with the new one um, build quality seems a whole lot better um, you know the, the the buttons don't rattle um, the switch is nice um, you know it just it just seems like it's a lot better quality build on this device um, and like I said I just you know when I first got the lava tube one um, I was one of the first people to get it I was in on the pre-order thing that they did and I was so excited to get it and when I got it I was like oh well okay and I don't think that's what a lot of people did we had a wrong tag on you for your name oh I missed that I guess um, but the, uh, you know, the thing is, is, you know, it's a popular device and the price had come down and a lot, you know, I, I actually bought several more of them and have given them away to friends. Um, so, you know, in that, in that respect, it's a good device because it's a nice way to get people into a variable voltage cheaply. I'm just picky. So I didn't care for it. Um, when I got this one, I withheld that judgment. I just wanted to say, okay, this is a whole new device. I knew that as soon as I opened the box. 
and I wanted just to take a look at it and say, okay, from a brand new perspective, what does this device do? What do they claim it? What does it, you know, what does Volcano claim it can do? And does it do it? Well, the first ones we got, um, since you know this, were, were off because it was tuned wrong, you know, and we talked to Volcano. I know you did, and I know I did. And uh, the thing that impressed me the most was they listened. Um, you know, they took a lot of crap on ECF in their thread because they have delayed the release of this thing. Uh, me personally, I think that's the best thing they could have done. My dog wants to say hi, too. Um, <laughs> but, um, you know, I. To me, I, I'm kind of, you know, I want things to be right. And I know that, you know, this, both of these that I got, but, you know, this is the current version. I actually have it hooked up to the ECD meter now. Um, you know, I, they actually sent it to eSig Advanced. So they gave it to me to test for them. I, I have to give it back. As soon as this becomes available, I'm going to buy one because I think it's that good. Um, nice. I'll probably end up getting two. I'm getting a pink one for Abby. But, um, and um, I, I just, you know, I really like it. I think it actually, you know, it does what they say it can do. So you Very did, nice. you did uh, pop it on the ECD, and you got all your measurements and stuff. Yeah, I, I did it real quickly today. I mean, I didn't chart it or anything. I've just, it's been kind of a crazy day here. I told you on the on text earlier that my computers crashed, so I had to get them back up and running. But I did put it on the ECD meter, you know, and all the voltages that I set at with a couple of different cardos, it, it seemed to be pretty well you know, within, you know, 0.1 or 0.2 above or below, but it was pretty close under load. So I was, I was, you know, satisfied with that. Yeah. Thanks. So, so Nick, you're I, a little bit less of an X's and O's and numbers and volts and watts kind of vapor. I mean, you just are, and I, I don't mean any offense by that. Yeah. I think, you know, no, absolutely. you know, once you got the Darwin, you started obviously thinking more about watts and, and as variable voltage things yeah. have come into your hands, it's pretty clear that you've, you know, you understand it, but it's not the way you like to analyze a device. So, so for you, from V1 to V2, what's, what's impressing you? Uh, I like, on the V2, that I can use like a 2.1 ohm atomizer or cardamizer above 4 volts. I can put it at like 4.4 volts, and it'll vape, which is, I mean, that's what I want it to be. And the Lava Tube 1, you know, it did that thing where it just dialed back the voltage you know, whatever, it regulated it down to like a safe level, which was usually like 3.3, 3.4 volts. If you tried to put something low res at a slightly higher voltage, it was like, uh, -uh and dialed it back, and then your vape was, was super weak. And I like that, uh, I like that I can put this at 4.4 volts and still run a 2 ohm, you know, atomizer. This is the fatty rebuildable, and the coil in it's 2.1 ohms. So at 4.4 volts, perfect. I mean, it's perfect. And I can set it there, and it'll actually give me, you know, give me the power I need. I'm, I apologize. I have to step away one second. No problem. One second. Sorry. Sorry. What? <laughs> you can never no pin that guy down. He is... And in the, and in the center of our screen, since uh, Grim Green couldn't make it, is Grim Green's chair. And He's we'll going to be wait, on another we'll show. I know it. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, hold on, guys. I have another computer set up over there. <laughs> so I have a I have a question for Faze uh, regarding yeah. this, because um, you and I are both a little bit geeky right. when it comes to this kind of wow. stuff, and so I'm somewhat I'm somewhat curious as to. I mean, when you're doing stuff that uh, when you're when you're doing reviews, and this is sort of a reviewer question, so to speak. It, when you're doing reviews, I mean, how much time are you giving it with the review, and how much does the human factor play into how you review? Uh, and I, I mean that specifically to this device because this one uh, is a long-awaited device. Yeah. Well, I mean, I had the 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 tuned wrong version for a while, and um, before I even said anything about it. You know, um, I, I played with it for a good two weeks um, just yes. because I wanted to be sure. You know what I mean? I, I didn't want to be rushed to judgment kind of thing. You know, I had some little Thanks. things that were wrong with like, um, <laughs> well, nothing against you. I'm just, you know, because everybody wants to be first, but <laughs> not everybody can be first. And since you beat me to it, then I was under no pressure. But, um, but you know, I had little things that popped up, um, you know, like the screen 
uh, plastic popped off the first one, you know, and that was one of the things that when I wrote Volcano, it's when I said, that's just, you know, this is one of the things that happened. And they right. said they would address it. You know, I haven't had that. I haven't had the newer one that long. Um, but it seems like the screen area is better. Um, there's less, there's not a gap in it, like on my first one. Um, you know, so I think, you know, they listen, which is, which is good. But as far as, you know, from a reviewer standpoint, you know, I will, I will get a device and I will vape it, you know, for a good couple of weeks, um, with different Addies, different Cardos. Um, I'll, I'm trying, you know, I'll try some with rebuildables, some I won't, just depends on the device I ha I'm using. Um, and then I'll put it on the scope and I'll try it with the ECD meter. And I'll do that two or three different times and, you know, just to try to see if it's consistent. Um, and then, you know, once I feel like I got a good feel of device, you know, I'll chart it and graph it and um, shoot the review. Gotcha. Nick, how do you go it about it? It takes a while. It? Yeah. How do you go about it when you're looking at a device like this, especially one that's highly anticipated? Um, I sorry, will I usually... I'm sorry, were you asking me cause? I didn't mean to interrupt, and I'm sorry for walking away right there. Oh, no, 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 no. I, I, dude, it's okay. just happy to... I'm just glad that you came on the show. It's good to see you, yeah. and uh, I uh, I enjoyed talking to you at, uh, at VaporCon when we were talking about the Stinger mm -hmm. and stuff, so I'm glad that you're yeah. here. Yeah. Uh, the, you know, when you're going through a highly anticipated device like this, and there's been more more than a few of them, how do you go about, uh, you know... Uh, taking a look at this and dealing with the, the, the hype factor and, and getting past it and that kind of thing? Um, yeah, I, t I try not to get uh, too focused on, like, the hypiness of the anticipation of it. And every, I mean, every device or anything that I've ever done a video for, I always just do it from the regular vapor point of view. Like, I got this in the mail. I'm going to open it and see what's included and, and use it and just I just use it like I just start using it and I take notes on my phone when I think of something that is either great or annoying or times when I dropped it like I just recently was at band practice and I dropped my bombshell stinger out of my top pocket for some reason I had it up here and I got out of the car and it was like tunk 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 across the ground so I had to write down I dropped the bombshell stinger on concrete and it actually survived and so I take little notes and I just I don't know. I try to approach it, approach it from a, a very like, not necessarily a newbie point of view, but just like a general point of view from someone who's not like super into into vaping. Like, how would this work for the average person? Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, we know how ohms and volts and watts all work, but how does the average person approach it? And so I I try to take that like that point of view and like explain it to the average people like as an average person you know how would i use it right yeah because not everybody becomes a an insane hobbyist like us um yeah, yeah. you know so uh, i'm going to turn this back over to mike he's chomping at the bit over there i know so i have a question i have a question Sir? a couple weeks ago i know i don't know if you guys watched the show but we were talking about the z max and just in general, I feel like we're starting to see, like even with the eye taste, um, you know, the Z Max, uh, the the Lava Tube version two. I think we're seeing better quality out of China. I mean, can we agree on that? Mm -hmm. I mean, even with the Eco Twist. Yeah. Well, the yeah. Eco Twist is is, you know, I mean, Joy is just they're they're uh, they're just. I was talking about this yesterday with a, with a, with a fellow vapor. How Joy is just the you know top quality, um, like one of those companies where you feel like you can buy um, the first product that they the first version that they put out because it's it's a it's a high quality product even on revision one, which isn't necessarily the case with a company like Smoke Tech. Um, but with the higher quality stuff coming out, I know we all have pro varies, right? I mean, I've got one right here. I always have one right here. Um, I have two of them, actually. I don't know. The other one's strategically placed in the condo. Uh, I had four you know, so. until this morning. <laughs> What's that? I had four Pro Berries on my desk until this morning. Three of them are going to the Philippines. Wow. I know a woman who has 12. But what? She wins. 
Yeah, she filled the console. <laughs> oh. She's I, I met her at the first VaporCon, and she filled the console of a rental car with 12 Proveris, and they all had charged batteries. And I think she was really afraid that she was going to exhaust a battery and be stuck without a PV. Was, was that Mergy? No. Somebody should buy her a charge. So, <laughs> so I guess what I kind of want to hit is, um, you know, Kaz, me and you had the the um, the Z Max, yeah. and we were we were talking about you know the Pro variant and you know versus the Z Max, and we didn't really want to say anything, but I just want to like put it out there. Does anybody feel like the Pro variant needs to be upgraded in order to become um, that much better than the devices that are coming out of China, or I mean, do we feel like the Pro Vary isn't quite as important as it was a year ago to the vaping community. I mean, I still think that it's a massively high quality device, and you know, obviously, I got two of them; they're never broken. Um, but with devices coming out for eighty, ninety, a hundred dollars that do essentially the same thing, just in a different form factor. Um, is that kind of uh, softening the blow of uh, buying a Pro Vary and, you know, feeling like you got this, like, awesome device that costs you $160 well, or $70? I mean, I, I think that's the most likely thing to happen with the Pro Vary, right? Is that the price has got to come down, especially when you look at it in the... The mini and the regular size are aren't they exactly the same price? They yeah, are. I'm pretty sure that they are. I mean, it it something's got to yeah. give there. I think for them to remain competitive, but at the same time, there's always people that are going to want something that is quote unquote American made, yeah. uh, and that at least uh, you know well, I can guarantee most of the electronics are probably being sourced from elsewhere. They may be assembled here by ProVape. I think that alone um, is a big selling point for them and a feather in their cap that you know somebody else might not have. Right. Yeah, I you know I I I look at these these new mods coming out. I still don't like the ZMAX as much as I like the Proveri or even a Kick Tube mod. Uh, that's just me. For some reason, PWM even when properly calibrated has an altered taste to it. I have a very sensitive palate, so my ZMAX gets used, but it hasn't displaced the Proveri. Um, and I've only run into a, f a few other vapors who I've mentioned to them. I mean, does it seem like it has an altered taste? And there's been a few people who have agreed with me. So I, I think I just have... And I'm also a guy who vapes at like 1% flavoring. So I, I'm, I have a really, really sensitive palate. Most people can't even taste that. So I, I'll, I'll strike my opinion from being very valid. I think what it's going to do is drop the pro very price. Um, whether they do another innovation or not is probably up to them. I'm really interested in what Nick has to say about your question, though, because he's got a unique view because of the volume of equipment that he sees. Yeah, I feel like, uh, I think Basil Ray actually hit it uh, really well. I think the price of the Provary has to come down. To me, the Provary is one of those staple devices that is always going to be around. And even if they don't innovate it at all, and even if they don't drop the price at all, people are still going to buy it. Because there are, I mean, a hundred and something Provary videos on YouTube. Everybody talks about Proveries. There's Provary pictures still getting posted. People had just bought a Provary, and they're excited about it. So I think even if they don't change it, and even if they don't drop the price, the Proveries just... It's always going to be there, and it's always going to be a contender. It's always going to be a comparison to every mod that comes out. And even if they release, you know, the ZMAX version three with all these fancy bells and whistles and nonsense, people will still go, "How does it compare to a Pro Vary?" Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? It's like the yeah. benchmark of variable voltage mods. I mean, I would go so far as to say the Pro Vary is the new silver bullet. <clears throat> I mean, we used to say, you think two years ago, back when unregulated was pretty much all we had, everybody said, oh, you got to get a silver bullet. You know, your new vapor, oh, you got to get a silver bullet. Well, now, it, it, I mean, it's just about to the point where, especially if the price on the probator were to come down, um, you know, depending on what the price is in the lava tube, so it looks like everything, you know, checks out in the lava tube, uh, the new one's going to be a great device, that one of those may just end up being the new silver bullet. I mean, when you think about it, how many times, Nick or Phase or any of you guys, have you told somebody, "Oh, well, you're a new vapor. You gotta get a silver bullet." Oh yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I skipped absolutely. over that. I, I still use mine, so. Yeah. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, Kick Silver Bullet is still one of my favorites. Well, that's well, a good vape, though. I mean, the kick the kick does bring... I, and and, and I, I've said this a million times in different places, forum post shows, whatever, but the variable voltage thing is nice. The variable wattage thing is nice, but it's the regulation piece that really takes these things and tosses them over the top. And yeah. it, 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 because the thing that we struggled with was even with an 18650 and a silver bullet, you got halfway through the charge and your, your wattage has dropped significantly. Um, yeah, and, and you, you noticeably. Up, yeah, and 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 you end up with less than I, the the vape that you started with, which is why you had new battery syndrome. So I would have an eighteen six fifty and a triple V, and I would vape the first quarter of the battery and flip it out. And it's a you know a two thousand mile battery, a twenty four hundred mile battery. So what am I doing? I'm doing this three or four different times. Um, you know, where I'm changing out batteries during the day, so it gets a little bit weird that way. What, what's your What's your impression, uh, man, uh, uh, face to Matthew? Of oh, the Provery? Yeah. Um, I, you know, it, it it's the benchmark for, for variable voltage. Yeah. Would I like there to see go. the price come down? Sure, I would love to. Um, that's up to them, though. Um, would I like to see them add something? I think someone said in the chat earlier, uh, variable wattage. Uh, heck yeah, I would. I mean, that would be awesome. Um, but as it stands, you know, when we review stuff and, you know, being humid, we, we compare um, and everything is compared to the Provary. You know, when I compare, though, you know, since we are talking about the lava tube, um, you know, and, and, you know, I have it. I do have a Z-Max V2. I also have the V1. You know, um, if I had to compare those two, even though the Z-Max is variable wattage, um I, if I had to buy, pick one of those two devices, it would be the lava tube. Um, I, I, I know a lot of people are probably going to crucify me for this because um, I got crucified for my review of the VMAX, but I just, I'm trying to like it, and I, I just don't. Um, is it an I, altered taste issue, or is it a form factor issue, or what exactly uh, can you pin it down to that's troubling you about the unit? Uh, it, it's more just the, it's, it's little things. Like the, the fact that it doesn't regulate the VRMS as well as the lava tube does, you know, you know, if I set it to 10 watts, you know, I get nine. Um, on the old one, I got like 15. Um, you know, it's just it's not as accurate. Um, the fit and finish of it, you know, mine had little burrs in it. Um, the the cap didn't seat right. Just little stuff, and, and you know, it's stuff that this is the second version of the Z Max. It, they had four versions at least of the VMAX, and you'd think as many of these things that are out there, they could get it right every time. Um, but, you know, I don't know. The, the Lava Tube, both of the ones I got, the first time and the, the, the current version that they have out that's tuned correctly, both of them were exquisitely machined. Um, there wasn't a flaw in either one of them, and, you know, something that's mass produced I think that's pretty impressive and I can't say as I've had the same experience with uh, the Z maxes or the V maxes and I've had I've had a few and it's not just like a one-time fluke um, do I think there I know there's a lot of people that like them um, and you know in and of itself it's not a bad device but like I've had to compare those two you know I think that's more of a of an accurate comparison than saying comparing the Z max to the pro very or even the lava tube to the Provary because they're not really in the same class. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And and I think that you're also comparing pulse width modulation to yeah, you know, like sort of DC current, but not really, but like filtered pulse width modulation. Yeah. So what happens yeah. when China catches on that you can filter this stuff out and, and have it come close to DC current? Uh you know, then is there a, a, a is that a game changer for the Pro Vary? Um, you it, know, I know might be. I, I popped my ECD meter on this lava tube, and the numbers are like so close to spot on. I was so surprised. It's like really um, maybe point one volts higher than what it's set to, sometimes less than that. Mm -hmm. So, 
I mean, I, I guess my, um, I guess it's just so, it's so close, you know, and I'm just wondering if they put a capacitor in there and straighten out that pulse, mm -hmm. you know, in any of these pulse width modulated devices, um, you know, has, has, has anything changed? Because well, I, I, I look at this community. I look at this community. Let's get this in real quick. I look at this community, and everybody's talking about price and, you know, waiting until uh, payday to buy stuff. Right. And, you know, it right. seems like a very price-driven community. So, and I know people have messaged me, and they say that they can't afford a Provary, which I don't understand something like not being able to afford a device unless you spend all your money on devices like me. Um <laughs> <laughs> I have a problem. Welcome to my world. Yeah, yeah mine too. <laughs> but uh, you know, I, I, I just might. I don't know. Uh, yeah, does I, anybody I have any thoughts on what I just said? Did I make any sense? <laughs> well, I'm, 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 I'm tangentially, I'm tangentially relating to it because there, for some vapors, and I've talked to two electrical engineers about this, and a physicist. Because I wanted to know, and I never covered it, and I never covered it in a review because there's other people who cover the tech side of it better than I would. And uh, what what I what I have gathered is that PWM, even with VRMS, still has the propensity or has the possibility has the possibility, depending on how the the wave is is done to heating the coil to a higher temperature in a moment than it would have heated with a filtered DC input. And the reason that I'm commenting on that is that there's not a lot of us, but there's some of us who vape in the 6 to 7 watt, 6 to 7 watt area, and that's my world. At 6 to 7 watts, PWM, when I talk to 6 and 7 watt vapors, it, it seems like PWM doesn't work for them. Or, or it has an altered taste, which is okay. Um, and and so my biggest fear with this is that all the mods are going to go PWM and I'm going to be looking at ego batteries because I really don't really don't like the PWM mods all that much. So that's sort of related to what you're talking about, but we've been talking so much I'm lost as to where we are anyway. So I apologize if I'm completely <laughs> off the so, mark. So three of you have have the lava tube, and there's been some kind of talk back and forth a few different times here in the chat about the. The 15 minute kind of timeout feature and, and five taps turn it on off. Is that bothering you guys? Uh, Does that, I, I mean, do you, do you find that being a problem? Uh, no, because I don't ever set mine down that long. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, uh, I noticed I that when you take the battery out and put the battery back in, you have to turn it back on. It turns itself off every time you take the battery out. Yeah. That's the only thing I noticed. It's weird when I put a battery in. I'm like, <laughs> what? Oh, I have to turn it on again because I just put a new battery in. Right, right. That's the only and one no, thing I've noticed. Well, and that and it resets. And that would be something, you know, I know Volcano is yeah, in the chat. And, that's, that's and I love, I just want to say one thing that I love that I discovered that I didn't, I had to, I was searching around on uh, the ECR subreddit to figure this out. And maybe it's already been discussed. But if you hold down the plus button, it shows you the ohms. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which I think is phenomenal. Like, that's a brilliant idea. Hold down one button, you can see your voltage, and then check your ohms just in one little button press instead of navigating to the, you know, like the ProVary ZMAX menu. Oh, oh. I think that's God. a nice oh, little thing. I, and, and makes and it the makes life menu, simpler. I'm, the ProVary menu I'm so used to, but the ZMAX menu mm -hmm. is so ridiculously cryptic. Thank yeah, you. It makes no Thank sense. Thank you. Somebody yeah, it, it, with me. I, it's like it's like reading Chinese. Wait. Yeah. Okay. It, it makes so no sense. It it <laughs> yeah. It it really doesn't. RMS is like AMB or something. You know. It's <laughs> it, you know, voltage is spelled with a Z. I I don't know. Um, I still but, haven't gotten mine, so I can't. You're gonna chime in. you're gonna you're gonna have it's fun. It's ridiculous. You'll have fun <laughs> yeah. with it. <laughs> it is, but that button—that's like, a superior—that's a superior human interface. Those two buttons to the single button, I oh. think. Even with the Proveri menu, which is pretty understandable, I think those those two buttons. Because even on the traditional la lava tube, of which I've owned, uh, that was easy to use. 
So it's a good idea for the ohms. And then there's the volts on the battery is the other one, isn't it? You hold down the other button, you get the volts left on the battery. Oh, right. is that what you do? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> uh, thank there you, Kaz. You hey, you're, you're entirely welcome. No, I, I do think that... Um, I know for me, I'm the type of person who I change the voltage constantly. So uh, the ProVary menu system doesn't bug me as much as it did before um, because it, it does make sense. But changing voltage or changing any setting on the Z-Max rank, look, I'm not stupid. I know how to do it. But, <laughs> but it just <laughs> takes an awful lot of brain power in order to, like, you're thinking about it. You have to think about it. I design user you're, you're, interfaces. You're in effect reading Chinese because it is that cryptic. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. Go ahead. Basil, go. Did you? I got nothing. That? I don't have either of these things, so I got nothing left to ask. <laughs> you guys, you guys want me to open the phone lines for these guys? Yeah, let's can, do can that. we do that? Is uh, Nick open to doing that? I mean, we obviously I have know. to cater we'll to calls him. Sure, I got like, I got like fifteen talk. minutes to spare. Okay. <laughs> All right. Then our, our, I mean, our phone lines. I'm trying to so be troubled. like, uh, but I do have to work tonight, and that sucks. Yep. No problem. I appreciate your time, Nick. Thank you for coming on the show. Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so the phone lines are open, 847-423-8581. If you have questions for these guys, questions for us, if you have uh, psychological problems, need counseling, uh, <laughs> anything like that, we're here to help you. We're a full-service vaping <laughs> show. If you've never called in before, call in. Yes. We want to hear from New you. callers. New callers. Hey, what do you know? All right, I'm going to add. Now, this is where it gets technologically funky because I have to add this gentleman uh, to the current call that I have with Nick. And uh, area code uh, 585. Uh, welcome to Vape Link. And uh, go ahead and do your thing. Hi there. I have a question, question for uh, Jesse and Faze. I know, Jesse, you're waiting on your OLED Z Max. Faze, have you gotten yours yet? I have not. Um, uh, they're supposed to ship one to uh, Rosaka on ECF, and then he's going to come here, and we're going to uh, go through it. Come to uh, Rosaka on ECF, and then he's going to come here, and we're going to uh, go through it. Come to uh, Rosaka on ECF, and then he's going to come here, and we're going to go through it. Area code 408, if you could just... Area Did a phone code, just get eaten? Area code 408 is <laughs> back, so I took area code 408 <laughs> off. So area code 585, did you get your question answered, sir? Yes, I did, and I was wondering, anybody uh, find out why LavaTube decided not to do a variable wattage? That seems to be all the rage. Yeah, did you get the question, guys? It's about uh, LavaTube doing My variable wattage. My guess is simplicity. I mean... <laughs> Uh, and nobody really outside of Evolve, I think, is doing variable wattage and doing it real well. So, I mean, I think until somebody else can really figure it out, then it probably is just going to be one of those things we don't really see being done real well, uh, except for Evolve devices at this point. Yeah, um, I mean, I don't think that the ZMAX particularly does variable wattage uh, all that well. If I'm going to do variable wattage, I'm picking out my Darwin, my Opus, or popping a kick in something. Uh, and those are yeah. all evolved devices. Uh, I'd love to to uh, I'd love to see some better variable wattage devices come out, but I think that that still needs to be cooked up a little bit over there in China. If you ask and it, me, it looks too like uh, you know just in in some of the chat here, uh, Shadow Realm said that you know for them it w looks like it was a, a demand issue, so they went with variable voltage just because oh, that is where the demand is right now. Yeah. Did, did you know yeah. the amp limit on the new lava tube? Uh, I did the uh, three amps, I believe he said. Yeah, I think yeah. it's three. Three amps. Okay, and then I I noticed on the Z Mag it had problems firing like ohms one point two and lower. Does that seem to be an issue with the new lava tube? I haven't tried a atomizer that low resistance yet. Hold on I, a sec. I haven't either. I, I haven't. I, I have one. I will pop it on, Just and we 
we will see. Wrap a coil with like one coil. <laughs> It's <laughs> one coil atomizer. Yeah, it's, yeah just, I'm just, like, I'm, just I'm, one wrap. I, if I know Seth, he's, he's just going to take a he's just going to take a battery and connect it to his PV is, and put juice on the battery. <laughs> <laughs> my, all my so reversible genesis, I like to do like I, a two three wrap with twenty eight canthal, which gets to about point nine one ohm. Right now, there's nothing I can use to fire that except for a mechanical mod. So I'd love to get. A, a variable voltage <coughs> mod that can do variable voltage with my Genesis device. And right now there's nothing out there. I was hoping the new ZMAX would be, but then there's problems with a 1.2 ohm coil or low. Well, why don't you just run uh, a higher coil? I mean, a, a higher resistance coil with more voltage. Uh, Is there something you feel like you're not getting at that? Same. All right, that's fair. All right, here's what I can tell you. Is I just put a 1.2 ohm atomizer on there. Uh, and it fires perfectly fine. That is the uh -huh. lowest ohm that I have right now. So, I mean, that's that. Uh, I don't know if the I don't know if the um, 0.9 ohm. I don't know if there's any volcano people. I doubt that it was even tested with that. Um, but I mean, it's a good point. The the one point two ohm works and that does not work on my Z Max. That gives me a lot of firing problems on my Z Max version two. And it's not giving me any issues on the Lava Tube two, but I've only taken about five hits off it right here. Right. We have two calls also in the queue, guys, just so you know. Um right, well, right, well, I'll hang up, I'll let you get those through. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for calling in. Uh, area code nine nine seven two. You're 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 in the link or something. Welcome to the show. Who are you? And say hello. This is Kenny Knapp from uh, Texas, Garland, Texas. Hi there. Hi. And I was wanting to know if any of you guys uh, have been talking about the uh, Vamo because it has a lot of the uh, characteristics you all are talking about right now, but it's also a variable wattage. And does a lot of those things like the new lava tube, everything. Yeah, yeah. I watched uh, a lot less Scott. price, about half the price of the Z Max. Uh, I I think it's going for about sixty or seventy bucks. And uh, uh, I'm getting fifty four from England right now. From England? <clears throat> Is that sure. in pounds I, or dollars, though? I know they're selling it in the U.S. Um, but uh, from what I gather, having had it for about, I don't know, an hour, I popped the battery in it, and, and the battery, uh, I feel like I need to pull on the spring to make the battery fit. Hmm. Yeah, I've heard that it's, uh, it's built for like a stack in 18350s, more as a single 18650. Hmm. Is, that what, is that why the 18650 doesn't fit in it? Yeah, I mean, I'm going to test the device probably for about a week and a half, and then I'll, uh, you know, probably post a video the following weekend. So in about two weeks, uh, may actually, maybe a week from now, I'll have a video review of that done, uh, depending on how the testing goes. Um, but, uh, you know, just the general feel of it doesn't really even come close to the Z-Max. Uh, it doesn't even come close to... You know, it's not even in the same league build quality wise right. from the uh, the lava Nick, tube too. Nick, you started to have a comment on that, and I'm sorry, we have so many voice. No, no, it's fine. I, I, I wasn't delayed. even actually going to add anything. Uh, okay. And uh, Mike, you have a you have one of those the Vamos. Yeah. Is that what you said? Yeah, I was just going to say I just watched Scott's video on it. Scott, and b before his video, I had never. Uh, I'd never heard of one before, and when I saw it, I'm like, wow, that looks uh, familiar. I mean, that kind of looks like a lava tube, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, I had it, never heard it, of one uh, before, and now it, it seems like everybody's weird talking about it. It's because it's got like, all these little sections. I don't know, does this come off? I don't even know. I haven't had it that long. I don't think that comes... That doesn't come off. Uh, you know, the... the I haven't really vaped it all all, all that much. Uh, I I popped the Panasonic battery in it and it turned on. Um, 
But if it's meant for stacked batteries, I gotta look into it a little bit more. Um, it's definitely not up to par with the build quality of the Z Max or the Lava Tube Two. Um, it looks like it is built for stacked batteries there. Yeah. Do I have some batteries that I can stack? Yeah, check out uh, Scott's video. He just put it out a couple days ago, and yeah. he's real fun of it because the price of it and everything. Yeah, he has. Yeah, a I mean, the, video. it's definitely going to be a uh, a device that people who are. Um, just as a reminder, out. we have two more calls in the queue. So I'd like to get to them before we have to let Nick go. So let me go. I'll go ahead and step down. Okay. And uh, thanks a lot for answering the questions. Yep, thank you thank very you. much for calling. Uh, look and at that. Stack batteries fit in it perfectly. Okay, stack batteries fit in it perfectly. Um, okay. I do not know who was the uh, the first in here, but I'm going to go with area code 419. Uh, welcome to Vapelink. You're on the air. Hey, Ohio. Hey. Hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. How are you? This is Robert from Toledo. Man. Hey, Robert. What's happening? Hey, Robert. Oh, uh, well, uh, yeah, uh, about this animal. I love it. I mean, I, uh, I just had it for about almost a week, and I stacked with it. But uh, I think it's great. I mean, for the price, I think I got it for uh, fifty bucks. You know, there are a few vendors here in the U.S. that have them, and uh, everybody. I mean, I I don't have anything against the knockoffs and 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 all the Chinese stuff, you know. But I'm not a reviewer either, so you know. <laughs> You don't but, have to uh, be a reviewer to know what you like. And I mean, depending yeah, on who exactly. you ask, <laughs> and depending on who you ask, we're right. not reviewers either. So yeah, <laughs> right. Well, I just, I just like a. I do know I like a powerful vape. I do. It's like I tried the RS mode, and you know the RS mode on the RMS mode on the V Max, and I like the average wild, uncontrolled voltage. You know that that's just my personal taste. Gotcha. But, uh, how do you change it? I, I, I haven't looked at this. How do you change it from V average to? You you press the uh, the two buttons at the same time and hold them down for a few seconds, and it'll change to uh, from voltage to wattage. The two top How do you change it from from V average to RMS? Oh, uh, the plus button. You hold it down for like. Uh, about 10 seconds, and then you'll get a a, a little symbol to say, like, uh, NO1, NO1 is the average, NO2 is the RMS. Mike, show the buttons on the on the video, because I have you full screened right now. Because I, I have the black button one like you have. Nice. Mine has the yeah. black buttons on it. Thank you. So let me... Uh... Yep. Yeah. Let me just, I got it hooked up to the ECD and just, since since we're talking about it, um, okay. let's see. Set it to 4 volts. It's going to be 3 3.9, 3.95, 3.97, 4, 3.96. Let's see what it does around 5 volts. See that? 4.96, 5.1, 4 4.96. Seems like it's right. It's right in the ballpark. Right in the ballpark. All right. Let me get to this last call because I know Nick has got a life. Uh, yep. I want him to have a life. Uh, so, Eric, <laughs> thank, thank you. Guys. Thank you very much for uh, for calling in. Did we get your questions answered? And did you address All you right, Mike, you, you guys uh, bait well. Okay, we'll see you again. Thank you, too. Thanks. All right. Area code 408. I know this has been a long wait. Thank you, and welcome to Vape Link. Speak your piece, sir or ma'am. Hey, no problem. This is Ed from uh, Ed West from Casino. Checking in. Hey, Ed. Can you hear me? What's on your mind? I just want to know a little more. I'm kind of a rookie. I kind of want to know about the ego. Is it pulse width modulated? Yes. 
that while well, there's some revisions, um, uh, if you if you get a, a Riva clone, it has a Joytech battery with no PWM circuit. If you get a Joytech Ego, some of them have a PWM circuit that holds you at about 3.4 volts. And then I think the original ones that were with the Ego Cs were unregulated. But now everything has gone to uh, Ego Twist, and the Ego Twist is not uh, PWM. It's a buck boost circuit. Ah, okay. Great. Well, I want to say happy birthday, and you guys oh, are doing a great you. job. I'm glad yeah, you like the show. Others. Thank you for calling in. All righty. Talk to you soon. Okay. Bye-bye. It's your birthday, Kaz? Yeah, it's my birthday. It is my birthday. <laughs> oh, well, happy birthday. Damn Thank it. You. Why don't you broadcast that shit? Oh, you being here is his know. present. Yeah the, the, yeah, the fact that these two guys put up with me is my, is my present. <laughs> <laughs> You're so easy to get along with, Kaz. It's impossible to not get along with you. I, you know, it's better to make friends than to make enemies, bro. You know? <laughs> Absolutely. Hey, I agree. You're preaching to the choir, fella. You know, it's uh, uh, one of the things about this community that, and, and uh, God, I'm going to give you a speech because I've never had a chance to have this conversation with you. But, Go. you know, what we're doing here in this community is, is, is potentially life-saving for so many people. And that, to me, seems to be so important that, to me at least, uh, the political differences or, or games or egos or whatever doesn't make a difference. You know, uh, I've seen two parent. two, I have one parent who died of cancer. I have another parent who's on, who's on the way out who Sorry. has lung cancer. Uh, I just buried somebody with cancer. To me, this is about saving lives and getting good product out there that people can actually quit smoking with. That, I, you know, it gives me a spiritual, gives me spiritual wood. And... <laughs> Yeah. You know, that is the thing for me. So the the differences in the egos and who's right doesn't matter to me. It, it only matters from a cons for me from a consumer standpoint, and I'll end with this, it only matters that people get what they pay for. They get something that works, they get a product that works, they get a product at a decent price, and they're not being screwed by, by, by vendors or by other people in the community. So that's my feeling on it. So I get, uh, that's where I come from. So I don't care. I, if somebody wants to celebrate my birthday, that's fine. But uh, Spot on. it doesn't Happy does birthday. not have to lead the show. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Spot on. Absolutely. So we're are we Mike? Are we bumping up against the end of it here? We're in about an hour and a half. Yeah, we are. I can't believe that we went the whole show. We did. Uh, the whole time. Show. Okay. Great show. Awesome. We we did take a small bathroom break. We did. We did. We did. A, we did. We did. We did the bio break earlier in the show. I don't know how far <laughs> in we're in. It's like a haze now. I'm lost. <laughs> so let's. So, uh, you want to wrap up? Let Let's wrap up. <clears throat> and uh, you know, guys, uh, you're all my friends, and I yep. am glad that you could join us tonight. I hope that we can have oh. both of you on again in the future. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, Actually, my, my last question you, to before, both of you. Before you wrap oh, up. Hugs. Before you wrap yeah. up. Before you wrap up. One thing. Can can we do I, I love you, Nick. I'm gonna squeeze you I'm gonna squeeze you until you love yeah, me back. Come here. I know. Come here. I know. Um, can we can I, I would love to do this. I would love to do a show where all of us get together and just talk about reviewing and the weird stuff that we go through as reviewers because we all have great stories and they're all funny sure. oh and yeah it would be great to tell some of them so sometime in the future i'd like to do that i'm sorry for interrupting you mike please go Let's right ahead up. bro so when are you guys putting out your reviews of the lava tube 2 hmm? uh, one, two three mine's gonna be at least uh four weeks maybe maybe longer <laughs> <laughs> VaporCon really uh, messed everything up because I have this uh, schedule and I only do one video a week. And so I have this schedule of, I mean, everything's first come, first serve. So I have this schedule of things that are all in line, like this is next, this is next, this is next. And then VaporCon came and I missed like two weeks and then I got a bunch of stuff at VaporCon. So that's all before the lava tube. I, need, I mean, I can make I my own schedule, schedule, really. I'm like not that. bound by it, but it's going to be at least uh, three, four weeks. Based? Um, it'll be probably in the next couple. Um, 
I bumped a couple things out of the way to do this one just because it's been so anticipated. And, um, you know, there are lots of reviews on the other things that I have to take a look at um, pretty much on this one because I had the, the first version of it. So I pretty much have a feel for how the device works. Pretty much all I have to do with this one is rerun the numbers. Um, you know, but I mean, you pretty much, if you watch the whole show, you know what I think of it. I like it. So um, it's going to be, you know, not to spoil it and make you not watch it, but, um, you know, it's it's going to be favorable because I like the device. Um, so, but I, I just, you know, I want to actually be able to chart the numbers. I mean, I, I looked at it on the ECD, but I didn't, you know, make any graphs or anything yet. And that takes time. So a couple weeks. Right. I'm not watching it now. I already... You already said you liked it. <laughs> so let's, People uh, watch them anyway. Tell <laughs> <laughs> oh, a little bit of our audience. If you guys want to post uh, in the uh, chat your YouTube channels where they can expect to see these videos. Yeah. Uh, I know yeah. everybody knows Grim, right? But there may be some who don't. Uh, please, if you want to post that in there. Uh, you guys should definitely, if you have not subscribed to these guys yet, yeah, you should definitely subscribe to them. Absolutely. And uh, absolutely, Nick, you know, Nick all, was, all of these guys actually. You got Basil does reviews, Cos does reviews. Subscribe well, to everybody I because you have to get yeah. the most, uh, you know, as many opinions as you can. Because everybody has a different little nugget of insight that they throw into there, and you, you can't just think that every single person you know just knows it all you know so well, ba that's my... i'm close that? i'm getting there. i'm i'm <laughs> i'm nearly <laughs> omnipotent yes that guy's right <laughs> <laughs> so all right guys uh thank you again for taking the time out of your night i know you both uh do date night on monday nights and um, yep. Sorry, Amber, and uh, sorry, sorry, Abby. I Thank you. <laughs> I'm the apologize. I have to go apologize. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, we're gonna wrap it up. Thank you to everybody for watching. Uh, Kaz, our partners, can you rattle that off for me? Because I, off the top of my head. Oh, you're the on guy the who spot. Knows the uh, let's see. I want to thank uh, VapeNet. I want to thank uh, TVN. I, I want to thank Vapor Trails. Uh, thank you to ECF and New Vapor for hosting forums for us, and thank you for, to eSig Advanced for doing the same, uh, hosting a forum for us, and also for uh, uh, eSig.tv, which also hosts a forum for us. So we're all over the place. You can find us if you need us. Give me the cue, Mike. You you want to make a funny sound before we end the show? <laughs> All right, we're out of here. Good night. Is that how, on the spot is that how there, man. <laughs> that's that's how. Yeah, somebody makes a funny sound. We're out of here. Bye. Okay. This is going to be a review of the Smoke Tech Telescope. I felt compelled to make a video now. I believe that there are safety issues with this. Let's get into the safety issues first. Bent through the threads here. I doubted that. That is airtight. Airtight. Nothing is venting. Final. End of story. I did it with a balloon. <laughs>